to Robert Payne and this is uh, the teaching series Go Into All the World Part 2 and uh, this is going to be uh, these uh, videos are going to be transcribed and made into a book so in the future uh, there will be a book uh, with these messages on so the next heading is sharing your struggles with people uh, one way of being an effective a witness to people, one way to stand out with people and be someone that's uh, totally different than many Christians is for you to be open and share your struggles with people. It takes effort and it takes a real decision to be open and share your struggles with other people. Some people think that uh, being a Christian means that that you don't have any problems, that you, you don't have any struggles. Some people think that being an effective witness to other people is to hide their struggles and to hide the troubles that they're going through. And this isn't just true of witnessing to non-Christians. This is true of most churches that you go to People are wearing masks and faces. They uh, come to church and they confess to their fellow brethren at church that everything is going fine and everything is uh, good and uh, there's no trouble or no suffering in their lives. And uh, you find out uh, uh, that uh, soon that someone loses a job and then uh, they say that everything is fine and next thing you know they've lost their house or one of the children have run away from home or their mother or their wife has left them. These are people who come to church every week and they share that everything is fine and dandy and then tragic things manifest in their lives and you wonder where they came from because the person was saying a week before that everything was fine and the next week they lose their house. They must have known for many months that uh, the bank was going to foreclose on them and was going to require the house off them and yet they keep it secret. So Christians do that to each other and uh, live this uh, shallow sort of life, not a full and expressive life uh, to each other. So they uh, feel even more compelled to hide their life from non-Christians. They, they somehow mistakenly think that uh, not sharing their sufferings with other people, not sharing their struggles with uh, non-Christians is going to be a better witness to the non-Christians when in fact the opposite is true. The opposite is true. It's when you uh, share with non-Christians the struggles that you're going through like uh, you're having trouble with depression and you're in a depression at the moment which I was in uh, between the last two videos I fell into a depression. Uh, so uh, sharing with people that uh, you've fallen into a depression uh, makes you vulnerable and makes you transparent to people and they're there to watch you as you uh, struggle uh, with your depression and they're able to see the Christ in you and the hope and glory that is uh, within you. They're able to see uh, your attitude and how you uh, navigate uh, the depression or whatever problem you share with them that you're going through. You could say that uh, you've had uh, trouble with access with one of your children and uh, your wife uh, if if you're separated, your wife is stopping you from seeing your oldest son or your oldest daughter. Sharing that struggle with people allows people to see that you're human, that allows people to see that you're going through uh, 
traditional struggles that everyone else does and they come to realize that uh, being a Christian themselves, they don't have to be devoid of problems. They, they see that the proper Christian life doesn't have to be a life of perfection and a life where everything goes well. They can see in you that uh, just because you have Jesus in your life doesn't mean that you don't have the normal day-to-day -day struggles that a person has. And uh, it... it uh, provides a, an amazing opportunity for you to share and witness to people when you share your struggles with people. People are interested, uh, people mistakenly think that a non-Christian wouldn't be interested in hearing about your struggles, but it's actually the opposite is true, you know. People watch TV and watch movies all the time, and TV and movies, uh, part of what makes a good story a story is the opposition and the struggles that the characters go through uh, in their life and in their progress through the movie. It's the struggles and it's the hardship and it's the enemies and uh, the um, people who are in the movie to distract and bring down the lead character that gives the whole movie flavour and it's good to understand that Jesus is just a part of a person's life, just as much a part of a person's life uh, when they're going through struggles as when they're not going through struggles. And people need to understand that the proper Christian life isn't free of trouble and isn't free of trying circumstances, but the proper Christian life is the ability and the way that you handle these trials tragedies and uh, these trials that you go through. So being authentic and being real and sharing your struggles is uh, an effective uh, way to witness to people and, and share your life with people. People don't want to see a candy-coated uh, picture. They don't want to see something that's dressed up uh, and all nice on the outside, but inside uh, wickedness and, and trouble and, and, and disaster. People don't want to see whitewashed tombs like Jesus uh, shared. He wants you to be real and he wants you to be authentic with people. And the more that you are real, the more that you are authentic with people, uh, the more that you'll understand uh, the more you'll be understood and listened to by the people that uh, you're ministering to. Uh, the next heading is being transparent. And this flows on uh, from sharing your struggles with people. It's uh, essentially the same subject, but uh, being transparent is... Uh, having the ability to share honestly what you're going through and uh, what you've been through and what you're thinking. Uh, people want to understand the way that you're thinking. People want to know uh, your decisions and they want to know your thought processes. They want to know what you're thinking and how you're going to react. People who are friends of yours and people that you're interacting with want to know that you're a human being and that you have struggles and you have hardships and they want to know how you're dealing with them. You can hide and deal with your problems silently. You can uh, live a life like many Christians do and hide your troubles from other people by thinking you're more righteous and more holy by doing so. But it's through sharing your struggles and sharing your trials with other people, it's through being transparent with other people that uh, you really manage to shine the light of Christ in other people's lives. I have found that um, sharing parts of my life, sharing my struggles uh, in the various books that I've written uh, really 
tends to draw people closer to me. It tends to draw people out of uh, where they are in their comfort zone and it draws them into my life and my experiences. It's through sharing things honestly and sharing things that I didn't necessarily have to share that shows people that I'm a real person, that I, I can be trusted and the things that I say can be uh, properly uh, trusted uh, rather than being a person who writes a book who's just about information and doesn't share individual things about their life, uh, about his life to illustrate points. So I like to illustrate uh, points that I make by being transparent. So before when I said uh, that uh, you could share that you, you couldn't see your oldest son through uh, um, your wife not allowing you to see your son. I went through 16 years where I didn't uh, have access to my boy. Uh, my wife, uh, former wife, remarried and she said to me before she remarried that um, uh, that I wasn't going to be able to see my son anymore and the last time I'd fought a custody battle for uh, the ability to have access to my son, I ended up in a psychiatric ward through uh, a, an attack of witchcraft on my life and I had a nervous breakdown and my wife threatened me and said if I fight her in court for access that I'll end up in hospital again. So she was laying down this threat. Um, I'd had a friend of mine meet my wife and tell me that my wife was uh, uh, had a part of her personality that was wicked and this friend advised me that um, I shouldn't see my son anymore and uh, I took that advice and uh, later when my wife said I couldn't see my son anymore uh, Jesus told me to walk away from my son so uh, I spent 16 years uh, where I didn't have communication with my son and uh, Christmas uh, uh, and Easter uh, holidays that people celebrate and get excited about, these were times that were uh, really sad for me and depressing times and even today, even though I can email my son and uh, have contact with him, uh, we're not close and we haven't got uh, a great relationship and so I still uh, have trouble uh, during Christmas and Easter. I don't uh, get into the mood like other people uh, because of this uh, breakdown of a relationship with my son. So uh, for people to know that uh, you've been through that uh, type of suffering and you've come out the other end, when you share stories like that, people feel that you're real, people feel that uh, you can be trusted uh, with their stories and it's amazing how many uh, fathers uh, have had a breakdown of relationship with their wife and haven't been able to see their children. So as you share those stories, it gives people the opportunity to share with you stories and troubles that are in their life. They feel that you're approachable. They feel that uh, you're a person who would understand them because you've shared so openly about your struggles. So it's like... It's a, it's, a, it's a funny description, but this is what I feel to share. It's like a mouse trap. It's like when you share your, uh, when you be transparent and you share your struggles, it's like you're putting a pit of cheese on the mouse trap. It's like you're putting a bait out there uh, for other uh, people who don't know Christ to come along and sample the bait. Sharing your struggles is like the bait and 
it may take months, it may take years, but some of those people end up approaching you uh, with their own struggles and asking you about advice and asking you questions about certain situations that they find themselves in simply because you've been transparent with them and you've been willing to share your life warts and all with them. They feel comfortable with you and they feel at ease with you and uh, this is why they open up and this is where you can share uh, quite honestly that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ uh, is the one who gets you through all these circumstances and helps you cope and it's your faith in Jesus that carries you through. You can uh, share that uh, in the appropriate time when someone comes forward or you can choose not to share that because they already know you're a Christian and you can save that to later. But when you, when you are transparent with people, uh, it allows people to understand you and to feel comfortable with you. And I, I hope that uh, through my story that uh, you felt that I'm very much aware of uh, the spirit of witchcraft and uh, there's a, a spirit called the Jezebel spirit which is a witchcraft spirit many uh, Christians have and it can come against you in the past week um, I since the time I uh, did the first video uh, six days ago or uh, five days ago I came under tremendous attack and uh, fell into a quite deep depression until I posted on Facebook and had uh, about 30 people pray for me to come out of that depression and whilst I was in that depression I couldn't do this part two of this series. Uh, this uh, book series was waiting for me to uh, do the next video and the next portion of it and I just didn't have the strength uh, the spirit, I just couldn't get myself into the mood uh, to uh, make a video and share. It's through targeted witchcraft over my life that caused me to fall into a depression where I couldn't go forward and I couldn't move forward with the project uh, that I have uh, to record this um, book on video and have it transcribed. So witchcraft, the Jezebel spirit, can affect you in uh, a very uh, discernible way. It can make a real uh, impact on your life and uh, that's the spirit that my former wife had and that was the type of witchcraft she did uh, when I couldn't see my son uh, when I ended up in hospital through the custody fight so it's a scary spirit and it's something that affects uh, people and it's uh, its effects are real and uh, I'm not a person who simply uh, feels uh, sad and uh, uh, gets discouraged and uh, gets distracted from making videos and uh, doing the next portion of my book. It was an, uh, an actual effect that happened to my life. It was an actual attack on my life by a Jezebel spirit and I ended up in uh, a deep depression uh, which caused me uh, not to have the ability to uh, get in the right spirit and the right mood uh, to record part two of this video. So sharing that with people, sharing that with you, uh, for some of you who have been attacked by that spirit, it brings understanding to you and uh, comfort to you and, uh, and um, more revelation to you. To some of you who haven't been attacked by that spirit, it's a story that's worth considering and it's something that can bring understanding for you, uh, for other people who end up being attacked by that spirit. Uh, and for, for the rest of you who uh, 
not so much even interested in that spirit, uh, it illustrates the point that I'm transparent, that I'm a person who will use a story and use and illustrate what I say through uh, through my speaking and through my books uh, to demonstrate a point uh, and bring home a point. When you're transparent, nothing is off the table for you to share. You can uh, share anything and uh, you can have the ability to open up and open up uh, different subjects with people and share things that are really close to your heart with people and people really appreciate uh, honesty they really appreciate someone who's transparent and they feel particularly closer to a person who will open up and share their struggles and share their life and share honestly things that have happened in the person's life and so Transparency is a key uh, to open up the hearts of other people. Um, the next heading is sharing your faith walk in normal conversation. There's a particularly good habit to be able to get into and that is to be able to share about Jesus and share about your faith uh, in normal conversation. So uh, the other day I was at uh, uh, a meeting for Toastmasters, which is a public speaking meeting, and uh, one person was sharing with me um, over a drink. He was sharing with me that uh, he's got a roommate that has got this amazing authority that he speaks and he just uh, impresses the whole room and the whole room goes silent and everyone are in awe of what he says and I was I shared with him that one time uh, Jesus uh, preached through me and shared through me and uh, he went on for two hours and if uh, he paused for 10 seconds, I'd be panicking and wondering whether he was going to keep on uh, sharing because what he was sharing was awesome. And I said there was so much authority in what he was saying and it was so awe-inspiring. It was just the most amazing message I've heard in my life. And I said that may be hard for you to understand and it's not the normal story that you would hear and he said yeah that's right but I can understand uh, you sharing it. That's a, uh, maybe an extreme case of sharing your faith uh, with other people who don't know your faith but this person takes two things away uh, from that. He understands that I've got a faith in Jesus and he understands that Jesus can speak through me and I can hear from Jesus. And these are two things that he may ponder uh, as he walks away, but certainly two things that he'll remember about our meeting. And you, you don't have to... Um, you don't have to lead people in a sinner's prayer uh, the first time you meet them. You don't even have to lead them in a sinner's prayer in the first month that you meet them. But every time you have the opportunity to share a story about your faith, to share a story of what Jesus is doing in your life, you don't... You, have to come to a place where sharing about Jesus isn't a barrier for you that uh, he's so much part of your life he's got such an impact in your life that it's just like telling people that you went down the grocery store and you got a special on a certain item that you're looking for and how wonderful it was you can share in that story that uh, you're five dollars short uh, you you 
you've got the prices that you, you knew the prices of what you had to buy and it was uh, you, your money came up about five dollars short and when you went down the shops it was amazing that God had arranged for three of the products you needed to be on special and uh, you got the products for five dollars less uh, you can share that in the story you can share the story two ways you can share the story that you were just fortunate to have five dollars less that you spent um, and uh, you got the specials or you can share that God was a part of it and God had arranged for the products to be cheaper and for you to get by. That's a personal choice that you'll have with many stories that you have to be able to include Jesus to be able to include God in the stories that you share. And you don't have to go overboard. Uh, so the fact that people think you're overly religious and uh, you're always preaching to them, but you certainly don't have to hold back as much as most Christians hold back. They feel that uh, non-Christians have got no interest in hearing about Jesus and hearing about God and hearing stories that involve them. And if you... Uh, living a good life, if you're living a life that's close to Jesus, you've got many stories of testimony uh, where Jesus has interacted with your life and impacted your life. And this is what you need to do. You need to share your faith. Well, I suggest that you share your faith with people in stories that you tell. You just bring your faith and your faith life into the conversations that you have with people, that people understand that Jesus is very real to you. He isn't someone that died 2,000 years ago and disappeared, but he's someone who's an active part of your life. He's someone that you believe in. He's someone that uh, you know and he's someone that you interact with every day of your life. People want to know that because as they have questions about faith, as they have questions for you and as they go through their struggles, they want to be impacted by this same Jesus that impacts your life. Uh, so, so many people, when you share with them stories about how Jesus impacted their life, they may not share it with you, but they may go away wishing that Jesus would impact their life like you. And uh, so not everyone will share with you that they want the same relationship with Jesus, but it doesn't mean that they don't and you've got choices like I said before about the shopping and the specials you can tell the same story to a person without using God or Jesus or you can share the story using God and Jesus in the example and give them the glory and that's just a simple story but you know, when I shared with the person that Jesus spoke through me for two hours, there was no way to share that story without using Jesus. He was part of the story and he was the one that was speaking through me. I didn't do that story to convert the person, but I was just illustrating a point that Jesus speaks with a lot of authority and, and I've heard myself with Jesus speaking through me speak with a lot of authority and uh, for my voice to be awe-inspiring and totally amazing. And so I used that uh, opportunity. Now, I could choose not to use that opportunity. I could be speaking to a person and the idea of that uh, illustration could come to my mind and I could choose right then not to share that or I could choose to share that. It, the choice is up to me. Like, Jesus doesn't force your hand uh, to witness and evangelize people. Jesus doesn't force your hand to force you into evangelizing with people. And Jesus uh, doesn't want anyone, and he doesn't approve of anyone who forces you to do that. Witnessing and sharing your faith is always a choice. 
and I chose to do that. But I'm that sort of person. You can't, uh, you know, I had a conversation with another person at Toastmasters and he was talking about how he thinks that most churches are mismanaged because of the pedophilia that's involved and the child sexual abuse that's been involved in many of the churches in Australia where I live and that's been reported on TV and you know no uh, no Christian organization has been exempt from the inquiries and he's disgusted with the Christian faith and he thinks that the whole Christian faith is mismanaged because these people have been allowed to abuse children. I shared with him that pedophiles uh, will choose an organisation and, and uh, choose places where they can have influence over children so they're given the opportunity to abuse. And I said it's not so much the organisation but it's the predators, it's the predatory uh, instincts of the pedophiles that allows them to uh, find places in organisations where they can abuse children. And he sort of accepted my point but he said that doesn't excuse the organisations. Uh, the organisations should understand and vet people better and not allow pedophiles to be part of their staff and not allow pedophiles the opportunity. So I wasn't winning the argument but um, that was the first time I had a had uh, uh, meaningful conversation with that man. I've got many mums. He he comes to Toastmasters all the time, and I I can see I can go to Toastmasters every two weeks, and I can demonstrate Christ and demonstrate the Christian faith to this guy through my speeches. I can uh, say uh, stuff. I can say uh, speeches that are between six and eight minutes and I can share with uh, him and share with the other people uh, my faith and things I've learnt from the Christian faith and I can have an impact on him through my speeches and I can have impact on him through personal conversation over the coming months and years that I'm a part of uh, Toastmasters and I'm going to join uh, so I learn to be a better public speaker. So it's important to be able to share your faith with people. It's important to include uh, your Christian faith uh, in normal conversation. So I'm just going to end this here.